Good evening to you all, and a warm welcome to the third day of uh, this continuing program on digital transformation in healthcare. We are all in a digital world, and artificial intelligence, EMR, and uh, digitization in every walk of life, and medicine, of course, is always far ahead of digitization. And uh, especially when we talk about radiology, it's at the peak of uh, the digital world. And most of us know only the, the bright side of the digital world or the web. But unfortunately, like any technology or any new innovation, man can make it good or bad. So there is always a dark side and an evil side to the web which we use which is so dear to us, which is essential part of our practice. And so today, uh, we are, the, the, the topic for today is the future of cybersecurity in healthcare and what a doctor should know about the dark web. Uh, some of us, uh, maybe the young generation, uh, may be doing ethical hacking, uh, especially for getting journal articles, or uh, important scientific information and so on. But uh, hacking on the other side is a crime as we all know. And we keep reading about hacking which is going on at the national level and even at the international level. So today we have uh, with us Mr. Amit Dubey who is a well-known author and a national security expert and also a crime investigator on cyber forensics and ethical hacking to various Indian investigation agencies. He's also a popular radio host in the popular show called Hidden Files on Red FM. And he's also a prominent speaker and a renowned name on the national and international cyber security conferences. And uh, he regularly writes in uh, print media makes his appearance on the visual media as such, and also is a Commonwealth UK Shevning Fellow, and is an advisor, advisory member to various uh, startup boards, security forums, many of the international MNCs which we know of. And he also has written several books. And so what I would like to say is, there can be none other app person to deliver this lecture today. So we are really fortunate to have him as our expert today. And I'm sure that the delegates will make the best out of this opportunity. So welcoming you all and welcoming Mr. Amit Dube. Over to his talk. So good evening, everyone. This is Amit Dube. And uh, today we are going to discuss you very interesting things around cybersecurity. As mentioned and introduced, I'm a cyber crime in, uh, investigator. I've been solving crime cases since last 14, 15 years. And that's what I'm going to share with you through interesting stories. To start with, uh, if I could share my presentation, just uh, please bear with me. And uh, yeah. So, because this is especially for healthcare professionals, doctors. So I'll discuss some of uh, the case studies, use cases it's linked to doctors especially. I always like to start my session with this line that I would love to change the world, but they won't give me the source code. So I truly believe that this entire world is a software program and we all humans are artificial intelligence plugins. So, in a very typical way, the way any typical AI engine gets trained, we are also trained with that sort of data points. So we are the product of those data points that has been fed to us since our birth. Whatever information we have been consuming in our childhood or in upbringing through books, through teachers, through parents, through society, nowadays social media, internet, we eventually become the product of the data. And our intellect, our weaknesses, our vulnerabilities, our aspirations, everything depends on those data points those are around us. 
and how it is important for criminals because if i can manipulate those data points i can manipulate your decision making capabilities i can hack you so we don't hack you through your devices we hack your devices through you so you are the ultimate vulnerable end point for us when we try to hack someone so all these standard hacks those happened recently they happened because of some human mistakes and that's what we want we we have learned in these years i'll give you an assignment here just open your browser in your mobile phone or laptop whatever you are using right now and type privacy.net/analyzer this is a link that you have to type in your browser privacy.net/analyzer if you go down there will be a button called start test when you click on this button you can see lots of information here now what is this information <clears throat> you can see my ip address so what it does actually when you uh, click on this link this actually tells you that what all information can be exposed to your laptop and mobile phone on a single click so if you receive a link on your facebook messenger or on your whatsapp or any of your uh, application even in games nowadays we have multiplayer games where people chat with each other and if you receive any such link the other person can steal so much information from your device instantly and that's what you can see and check over here so when i open this link you could see my ip address so anybody would get to know about my ip address if i click any such link then you know my location okay then you know my operator that i'm using uh, a vodafone sim card you know my device whether i am using a iphone or a an android phone or a windows system or a mac system so you know that i am using a laptop or a desktop which is a windows system then you know what is my browser version i am using google chrome browser which is 104 then you know my resolution 1366 by 768 and you also know what is the charging status of my mobile phone or laptop you know 59% is my battery status right now Now all these informations has instantly leaked out from my device through a very simple link, which which is privacy dot net slash analyzer, and it could be any other link. Now what happens? Any hacker would first try to gather the information about you through these sources. We call it open source intelligence. Either they'll send you a link, or they'll find the information on open source platforms like social media, or they'll go with the uh, uh, precise data servers where your information is there but some offensive techniques can be used to extract that information once they have enough information about you they'll create attack vectors and attack vector is, is that methodology through which we hack someone so if i know that okay this could be your vulnerability this is your psychology this could be your weakness this is your these are the people to whom you are attached and you trust a lot all these attack vectors will be created accordingly so that's what happening nowadays and why doctors because doctors do have very very sensitive information about their patients about their day to day activities and even as as an individual they are vulnerable because they are too busy doing day to day stuff and it's very easy to hack them so in last couple of years during covid i have seen many doctors were hacked and uh, lots of money was siphoned through their accounts and they could trust all these calls they could follow all these instructions because they were they were not so technical first of all and they thought that okay this is the usual way of interacting with the uh, with these platforms so you get a call from someone i got a request recently from a very popular ott platforms head and she told me that amit my my whatsapp is hacked and i my reaction was very instant i said oh you must your call she said yes so i'll tell you now three four such techniques through which anybody can hack your whatsapp and not only whatsapp your gmail your any other platform and if they hack your whatsapp or gmail or social media the damage or impact or the risk that you have because of that we'll see that also very soon so a typical border operandi that they are using right now that you get a call from some unknown number and the caller will say that oh you are referred by some of your very close friend and he'll refer some of your very close friend name in conversation then he'll build trust with you within few seconds of conversation 30 40 seconds the guy will say oh i think the other guy is also calling you can you just merge these two calls together so that we all can talk simultaneously 
now you will receive another call and because you your trust level is already high you will merge these two calls because you don't see any problem in that the moment you will merge these two calls your whatsapp will be hacked or your gmail will be hacked and how does it happen because nowadays all otps you get on call as well not only sms you get otps on call as well so the other call which was which came at that time was from your platform the person was ready to hack your whatsapp or gmail and he 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 instigated the otp call from that platform either from google or whatsapp because you were already in company conversation you received a call the guy has already convinced you to merge these call you merge these calls and the other guy could listen your otp by the time you could realize oh, what has happened your gmail was gone or your whatsapp was gone it's so simple and another modus operandi that criminals are using nowadays is call forwarding they if they get access of your phone for few seconds they can enable call forwarding we call it conditional call forwarding and it happened recently during covid a very big businessman was at airport and some a very beautiful girl she approached him and she said that uh, she has a flight and uh, her phone is switched off she has to make an urgent call to her mother so that somebody could come to pick her at airport now nobody usually will deny this request a very simple request to make a call to she she wants to borrow the phone so the businessman offered her phone he unlocked the phone and offered her and the lady just dialed a number called star 62 star mobile number hash which conditionally set a call forwarding on that businessman's phone it was just a few seconds of activity businessman was in flight for next 2 hours by the time he landed at ahmedabad he start receiving so many messages that his money is going out from his account his entire money was out and that happened just because he handed over his phone to a lady for few seconds and what she did she did conditional call forwarding which means she there there and there are some standard commands dialed code from airtel vodafone jio and bsnl every platform that you can enable conditional call forwarding in any phone and the moment you do that if the person is busy or he is unreachable at that time if any call comes at that time that call will be forwarded to you so because the lady set that conditional call forwarding in his phone and he was in flight for next 2 hours busy and all these otp call came at that time and they were forwarded to that lady she was or the criminal whoever was that he could hack his first whatsapp then gmail then bank account and eventually transferred money as well so very simple social engineering techniques are used to hack you or to create chaos in your life you have on an average 100 plus application in your phone and each of these applications can become entry point for an hacker to create chaos in your life they can not only create uh, uh, individual problem in your life they can also create professional problems especially the hospitals especially the organizations those are maintaining sensitive personal data of their patients they need to think a lot because they don't follow any security processes right now they don't do security audits and it's very easy to hack them they are using open wifi sometime and even wifi is uh, uh, not configured securely so very basic sanity checks are missing in every hospital whenever i visit any hospital i can hack the wi- uh, wifi then i can penetrate to their servers i can even manipulate information and which is very dangerous and uh, if it happens if you remember few years back when the national healthcare system of uk it was attacked by some state sponsored actors we call it uh, wanna cry uh, ransomware attack and that has encrypted all their data they could not uh, run their day to day operations for few days many people actually suffered uh, critically because of that attack because some operations were delayed many such day to day operations were hampered and that can happen with any hospital at any time and then imagine the impact the, not only revenue losses but also the reputation loss whether somebody will be able to build the start level of trust again with their patients consumers that they will visit that hospital again because uh, suddenly you will realize that you can't do anything 
you are handicapped your system is out of your control so that i suggest that we need to use some proactive methods to protect us against those attacks whether it is a ransomware attack whether it is a spyware attack malware attack bombs trojans we need to have a very strong secure uh, policy uh, a framework which should enable us to protect us against these attacks so organizational level attack is another thing and individual level attack is another thing because individual level attack can happen even through uh, your kids phone or any of your family members phone you might be uh, well uh, uh, conscious enough or you are not doing or you are not clicking any unsolicited link or opening any unsolicited attachment but you can't expect the same with each of your family members or your employees so the awareness level should be uh, uh, of that level for each and every one who is engaged in that process whether he is your family member whether, whether he is employed and that's what i always say that security cannot be achieved in isolation it is a mutual responsibility i could be secure and i say that i am quite uh, uh, conscious about these kind of attack vectors but then people those are around me if they are not conscious enough eventually i'll be vulnerable and to give you an example there was a bank from us and i was doing the security assessment of that bank and the ceo said that amit we are quite secure we follow all the security processes we are mature and you won't find any vulnerability in our system i said okay give me some 3 4 days of time let me find out if i can see something and within those 3 4 days what did i do why i did not scan their system i just searched about that bank on google and when i was searching this on google i found that recently the bank has engaged a law firm and they signed an mou with that law firm to get the legal services now my focus was not bank my focus was that law firm and in no time i found that the law firm's email server is vulnerable so i was able to send an email from law firm ceo to the bank ceo and i requested some sensitive confidential document from him and bank ceo responded because he could he, there's no there was no reason that he could not trust an authentic email coming from uh, the ceo of that law firm and i received all those documents because the vulnerability was in law firm email server not in the bank email server so whether you, you your vendors whether your third party uh, components partners people those are engaged with you on a day to day basis if they are vulnerable if their whatsapp can be hacked eventually you can also be hacked so security is a mutual responsibility it cannot be achieved in isolation that is first fundamental learning that i am going to share here with you all and second that all your data which you feel that this is very personal data personalized data that has been going out through many mobile applications on a day to day basis now what is that data <coughs> so i'll show you google's data here and then you can check facebook twitter instagram all these platforms they are actually capturing continuously lots of data from your device and that data is also making you vulnerable so i'm showing you some uh, google uh, data which what google is capturing from my phone every day and has been capturing since almost 12 years since when i've been using a smartphone so google knows so many things about me google knows uh, about my gmails google knows about my files in my drive google knows my locations of every day's location to more to be more precise i'll show you to what extent google knows my locations and why it this become an vulnerability eventually so if google knows about my emails my emails are not just emails nowadays because all my alert whether i am staying in a hotel whether i am uh, uh, booking a train ticket air ticket bus ticket taxi all these alerts are coming eventually to my gmail so google knows about all these activities where i stayed where i uh, what i visited and to whom i met everything is actually recorded now you could see my timeline here i have just opened my time and you could see lots of red dots a uh, indian map and world map all these red dots are actually my locations of last 12 15 years since when i've been using an android phone so from kashmir to kanyakumari to gujarat to odisha you can see all the assam and all these places where i've been visiting 
then out of india malaysia singapore saudi arabia oman azerbaijan norway sweden denmark uk ireland spain wherever i have been to google has been recording that you could see these are just locations so what we should not bother too much about it okay so let me take you to a particular date and time four years back in 2019 i am selecting a month called may some middle month and i am selecting a middle date 17th may 2019 now see that where was i on 17th may 2019 to right side you can clearly see that i was in copenhagen what is copenhagen is uh, capital of denmark so i was in denmark on 17th may 2019 and wherever i have been to all that track has been created by google precisely and you could see the blue line here and to start the day you could see that where i am staying i am staying in cabin city hotel and this is my hotel address i started from my hotel at 10:30 am in the morning then i took a drive for 5.9 km to right side you can see the clear blue line the track that i have taken from cabin city hotel to embassy of india i reached embassy of india at 10:49 and i was there till 1:31 i was invited to give a talk uh, in embassy of india so i was there for this period of time and then i took few pictures with honorable ambassador ajit gupte ji and google has mapped those pictures also with my timeline so oh, i was with him for the duration i took five pictures okay five pictures are mapped here then from embassy of india i took a drive for 19 minutes and uh, that i reached to a restaurant called bisburg you could clearly see the track which i have taken to reach to that restaurant then i, I was there from 150 to 235 and i also took few pictures again while having lunch at that place with few of my friends those are also tagged precisely with my timeline and location from restaurant bisburg i reached back to my hotel cabin city and it took me 42 minutes because i took another route and then i was in hotel from 317 to 325 precisely 8 minutes i was there then i took a drive for 20 minutes 8.1 km from cabin city hotel to airport i was at airport at 345 and i left or uh, took off at 528 pm so if i left the airport or i was my flight took off at 528 pm where was i after that so i was in flight for 11 hours 41 minutes and next day 18th may 2019 after 11 hours 41 minutes having a flight of 5842 kilometers i reached to indira gandhi international airport and i landed at 8:39 am and uh, left the airport at 9:14 am and then i took a drive for 1 hour almost 1 hour 1 minute in a taxi to reach to my home so precise so accurate every second of your location activity what i am doing what do i do everything is recorded suppose i need to see and this is another thing which i am telling you just open your browser and you have to type myactivity.google.com the moment you type myactivity.google.com it tells you that what you were doing on phone on any day on any day in last 12 15 years since when you are using a smartphone you can select a date and you can get the details with what i did what did i do so you, all my activities are recorded here you can you can keep on looking all those activities when i use whatsapp facebook instagram google map gmail whatever i i was doing in my phone each and every activity is recorded and you could see about your phone about your activities also like this another thing which is of your interest which could be of interest i could share that Use a link called Have I Been Pound dot com, H A V E I B W E N P W N E D dot com. Now this is also very important link because it tells you if your email IDs were hacked, if your email IDs were ever hacked, or your password is out, because there is a world called dark web. Every day you hear out some information, some news. that gmail's passwords are hacked or facebook passwords were hacked or a linkedin passwords were hacked and your password could also be there right now all these leaked databases they eventually end up in dark web and dark web is an area which is actually used by criminals 
for illegal purchases and 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 selling activities a, there is an big e-commerce activity going on on dark web and dark web is actually <coughs> much more bigger than the surface web the normal internet that you use the internet that you have used till now is just 3 to 4% of the entire internet just 4% because google does not index everything and you normally explore the things those are searched by google and google can search only those things those are indexed by google and which is not beyond 3% so 97% or 96% of the internet is still unexplored by you out of which 6% is dark web and 90% is deep web and this dark web is is designed in such a way that whenever you are accessing dark web your identity is hidden you are unexposed nobody will ever get to know about you who are you and because if somebody makes you hidden if you are hidden in a, in, a, in a world your worst will come out you only do wrong things and that happens in dark web illegal drugs illegal uh, arms and ammunition trafficking human trafficking child pornography uh, your uh, stolen goods or hiring hackers hiring killers hiring terrorists all these activities are prominent on on dark web so this is something uh, what i am trying to say this is actually a surface web website but it will tell you if your email id is hacked ever where it is password so i am using my email id and this this has been happening not because of my mistake or your mistake because of the server's vulnerabilities because the servers were hacked so you could see that this is my email id and my passwords were found in nine data breaches where my password was there in my 2019 data breach where my email id location name password username were found and 137 million records are there in this data breach then there was a data breach in 2019 my password is there as well then gravitar october 2020 leak there as well then i am jobs so many details were leaked at that time from the servers in 2018 then india mart in 2021 which is recent 38 million records were leaked and my my password is also there then linkedin my 2016 there also my password was compromised then nitro this is in pdf viewer there is also my password then paytm it happened in august 2020 and you would have uh, noticed that and that in that all people's details were compromised and then yatra in 2013 which is quite old but passwords were leaked at that time as well so this these kind of activities keeps on happening and that's why we always recommend that always change your password and always use two factor authentication what is two factor authentication that when you want to log into any of your account whether it is gmail facebook instagram or twitter or even whatsapp password should not be the only input there should be at least two inputs required for example when you use whatsapp there is an otp which is required and you can also set another password in settings so go to your whatsapp profile and there is a privacy settings there you can set another password so even if somebody gets your otp he will not be able to use your whatsapp which is very important because nowadays people hack whatsapp and i have told you hundreds of ways or at least three four ways to hack whatsapp and these new types of modus operandi keeps coming so you need to secure yourself by not relying only on otps but there should be an additional layer of your personalized password which only you know to access your whatsapp and similarly on facebook normally you log in to the facebook through a password but there should be two factor authentication so one otp should also be required to log in to your facebook twitter or instagram accounts so these are some common considerations that i request you to do to protect your data as an individual now i'll tell you some uh, interesting case studies and that will help you to understand the severity of the situation what happened recently there was a i'll i'll, I'll give you few more tips here probably before we go deeper uh, to the case studies for example you you have a doubt that your gmail is hacked and you want to check who has hacked my gmail 
or it is it really hacked or not hacked how can you check it so i'm logging in to my uh, gmail and uh, in gmail if you go to the inbox to the down the last uh, row of your inbox you will see a uh, option called details here to the right corner you can see an option called details there is a small hyperlink you click on that detail option the moment you will click that detail option there will be a pop up and the pop up will pop up will have all your login ip details that this particular gmail has been logged in through which ip at what time from which device if you find that oh this particular ip does not belong to you this this seems to be somebody else record it because that ip will help you to reach out to the criminal for example okay i doubt on this ip though these all ip belongs to me only so you will always have my location but suppose this belongs to a criminal because now i can see the record capture that ip and then go to a website called ip2location.com and mention that ip over there if you mention your ip here you could see the location of that person where he could be or she could be who has hacked your gmail so i have just used ip2location.com and then you could see that okay this ip belongs to noida so i was in noida and that's the reason this ip is there but this is the way you could check that if somebody else is actually using your gmail sending emails on your behalf or even keeping an eye on your email communication this is very very important time to time you should check it and same thing you can do on facebook as well if you go on facebook i am showing you on facebook as well so this is facebook account you have to go to the settings i am just going to my setting and uh, in settings you could on uh, in settings <clears throat> in settings you, you have an option called security and login just go to security and login and there you could see from where my facebook has been logged in so delhi gajabad delhi you could see if i take my mouse on this location you could see the ip address as well you can record that ip address so these small small tricks are really important to ensure that oh somebody else is not has the access of your social media handles or gmails this is really very very important always use two factor authentication and also keep on checking all these things then coming back to to my tips how to verify a link or an attachment if you receive a link which looks like malicious link or a file which is a video file or somebody sends you a message is it you in this video and you get curious oh which video where am i and you click that link and your facebook is compromised or your or any of your social media handle is compromised so before clicking that link what you, you could do so i'm sharing you one such tips here openvirustotal.com if you ever doubt on any such link or a file it could be a video file image file music file and you have a doubt or oh, this file could be malicious it could be a spyware it could be a trojan scan it here virustotal.com and then you can load your file here and it will scan it once it will scan that file it will let you know that what kind of malware is there and what kind of damage it could do if you have a link you can scan that link also so select this url option paste your link here scan it and it will give you all the details if it is a phishing link if it is a malware if it is a spyware what damage it could do you will have fair idea before you actually click that link you copy it paste it here and scan it these kind of small small things you should always do because you are always surrounded by people those are not happy with your success sometimes sometime with your company's growth and they may they may try to hack you they may try to harm you by just sending simple phishing attempts
if you ever doubt that your data is compromised and somebody is stealing information from your phone or from your laptop, especially from the phone, you can use an application called Exodus Privacy. So Exodus Privacy is an application which is available on Play Store and iPhone both. And you can scan your phone through it and it will tell you if your personalized data is going out from your device on a regular basis. And if, and if there is any malware inside your phone, of course. Then if you doubt that is if there is any Pegasus kind of malware in my phone or very high-end software somebody has installed or hacked my phone, what is Pegasus? So Pegasus was a very, very powerful uh, a malware which could be installed in your phone through, in a, through a missed call. So you get a missed call on your WhatsApp and your phone is hacked. And the other person can control your phone. He can listen to your conversation, your WhatsApp chats, your WhatsApp communications, your all pictures, videos, password, normal calls, everything he can uh, control, listen, and get the access by just giving you a missed call. It was a very powerful malware. <coughs> there was lots of hue and cry in 2019 when this Pegasus was so rampant. If you would like to check whether your phone is compromised by Pegasus kind of software, you can always scan your phone through an application called Lookout. So Lookout was that company which has uh, diagnosed or identified this particular malware, malware very first and uh, very, very credible application. You can scan your phone through it. And how to check if my WhatsApp is hacked? Because these are very common things that those are those those can bother us on any day. So if your WhatsApp is hacked, you need to check two three things. First, go to your settings and see if any other device is also using the same number. You can check it in your WhatsApp. And just for your information, WhatsApp has started supporting multiple devices now. So same number can run on four devices. And anybody can see your OTP easily without touching your phone. Because when you receive OTP, whether it is WhatsApp OTP, whether it is Gmail OTP, whether it is banking OTP, and if I am sitting just beside you, I can actually see the OTP for a few seconds. For two seconds, it is visible on, on your phone. So people normally take the advantage of that. If you have left your phone here and you are probably you are in a washroom or you are busy in something, and I'll configure at that time your WhatsApp and I can see the OTP clearly because the phone is lying in front of you and it happens. So there are multiple such ways through you are vulnerable in your WhatsApp, your Gmail, your bank accounts can be hacked. Now I'm not uh, going to scare you further because there are many, many such other attack vectors. Those, those are very, very prevalent and used nowadays. People are lose, losing huge money because of a simple mistake. Either they have scanned a QR code or they have clicked the link or they have just sent an SMS because somebody asked them to do that. You get a call. The person said that he is calling from Airtel and we just want to verify your SIM card. Otherwise your SIM card will be blocked. And you get panic. You said, why, why should my SIM card should be blocked? Because I've been using it since 10 years, 12 years. And the person said, don't get panic. You will receive an SMS from Airtel. Just reply to that SMS by typing one. And your verification is done. You don't see you don't see any harm in this. You receive an SMS from Airtel. You type one and reply it back. You just do this, and within the next two three hours, your entire money is siphoned to some other account, and your Gmail is compromised, your WhatsApp is compromised, your social medias are compromised. And what did you do? You just sent an SMS. That too, you got an authentic message from airtel and you replied to that message by typing one this was the only thing that you did and you lost everything sometimes if they get the access of your gmail they would know about your personalized communication your histories location details and they can blackmail you also so it's not only bank it, it is your reputation it is your very very sensitive details which you you are you you are the only one who's supposed to know but then it gets public. How does it happen? Because your SIM is cloned and somebody has created an eSIM. What is eSIM? If you don't know what is eSIM, just Google after my session 
what is eSIM and how you can obtain your eSIM. So criminal try to get the eSIM, your eSIM, your physical SIM's copy, or it's not copy actually, your physical SIM will be blocked once you'll get the eSIM. But that command that you received from Airtel, you received that message because the criminal has already requested your eSIM to Airtel and the Airtel wanted to verify whether you have requested the SIM or not because you typed one and replied. Here, Airtel got the response. Oh, you need eSIM. So he sent that QR code, which is your SIM card, to that criminal. And once your SIM card is with criminal, you can get the access of everything because everything is linked with your SIM card. So it is so easy. There are some legal things that I would like to tell you. At least you should remember these four uh, uh, legal powers. Section 354D, especially for women and teenagers, because they get this problem very frequently nowadays. They are stalked by someone. Somebody is sending them personalized message on Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, Twitter, and they think it's not a crime but it is a very, very severe crime. There is a three years jail punishment for such kind of stalking. We call it cyber stalking. So stalking is a crime and you should know it. You can register it and it will be registered under section 354D. Then revenge porn, which is very popular nowadays, which is very common. People are uh, suffering because of it. You get close to someone. There are some personalized videos. Then you break up. And the other person is threatening you to viral, to make those videos viral or to make those images viral. Now there is a clear cut section 66E for such kind of threat attempts. You can file a complaint and there are, there is a three years jail punishment along with uh, some financial penalties as well. Then 66D, which is for impersonation. If somebody is hiding their entity <laughs> and trying to communicate with you, you can always register a complaint. Police will find their identity. They cannot hide. But you should always go and file complaint on cybercrime.gov.in or to local cyber cell or police station. So in continuation to what we have discussed, <clears throat> I would also like to emphasize some of the legal powers that we should know so that we can file a complaint. And more than that, you should know that yes, in this particular crime case, the complaint can be filed because many of these cases goes, uh, go unnoticed and people don't file complaint. So uh, there is a dedicated portal by Ministry of Home Affairs, www.cybercrime.gov.in. And you can file a complaint anonymously also. If you think that you don't want to uh, disclose your identity, you want to keep your uh, personal details private, you can file complaint uh, in stealth mode as well. And uh, that is also possible. And police will take an action against the designated criminal. You don't need to disclose yourself. This particular power is there, especially for women and children related crime cases. So go to www.cybercrime.gov.in and you can file a complaint. Now there are some specific sections those are frequently used in such cases. Stalking, first of all, many of us we believe and we understand that stalking uh, is not a crime or how can stalking be a crime? What is stalking? Stalking mostly happens in uh, real world as well as in cyber world as well. In real world, when somebody is chasing you, when you are outside your house or when you are doing shopping or in school or in tuition, if there is a continuous change of your locations, we call it stalking. Similarly, people do stalking on internet as well. If you are on Facebook, they'll send messages. If you are on Instagram, they'll send you DM. If you are on Twitter, they'll comment, put some opinions. And they can also send you messages on WhatsApp and all other platforms. <clears throat> you are blocking them. You are uh, rejecting their request even though they'll keep on doing so and they'll create new handles, new numbers, this is called stalking. And there is a serious uh, uh, clause for that 354D uh, through which uh, the land, uh, it, it can actually land the stalker in, for three years in jail. 
So please use this IPC section. This is very powerful. And three IT Act section that I would like to uh, mention here, 66 E, D, and C. Because in many uh, such cases where uh, uh, boys and girls, they, 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 they become friend, become close to each other, take some personal pictures, videos. And after some time when they have breakups, they, the, one of the party or mostly the boys, uh, boys they, they react uh, very wrongly in this case and uh, they sometimes threaten the girl to publish those pictures and videos on open platform. We call it revenge porn and for this uh, there is a section called 66E. If you get any such threat, uh, you can file a complaint and there is a section which enables uh, a maximum three years of jail punishment for this case and also a penalty of two lakhs rupees of financial penalty. Then there is a section called 66D. So if somebody is impersonating uh, and they are actually hiding their own identity and they are interacting with you using somebody else's identity, we call it impersonation. Uh, so there is a section 66D for such cases and you can file a complaint. There is a punishment term for three years and one lakh rupees of financial penalty for such cases. Many or most of the cybercrime cases, they use impersonation because you get a call from someone that I'm calling from Airtel, I'm calling from uh, Paytm, I'm calling from Google Pay, I'm calling from OLX, OEO or wherever. Or your insurance is due, your premium is due, you are offered a free Nike shoes or something. So criminals are normally impersonating some organization or entity. So every cybercrime case would be filed under 66D anyways, because impersonation has happened. And 66C uh, is applicable where somebody is stealing your identity, either using your digital identity or your identity cards. They are opening accounts, taking SIM cards, or cloning Facebook profile or creating your Tinder profile, registering you somewhere. All these kind of cyber activities are uh, under 66D because your identity is stolen and somebody is trying to do something using your, your identity. So please be extra cautious for that as well and 66C is applicable for identity theft cases. <clears throat> Few basic techniques those are used to hack uh, your social media accounts. You normally get a copyright notice from Facebook or Instagram or Google it looks like this. You can see a typical Facebook notice somebody receives and his Facebook was hacked. Uh, you hardly notice the actual email IDs and see this is there is no Facebook email ID. It's, it's coming from postzero.com, but because they are using logos and Facebook link, you follow that. And you follow that link, they ask your login password, they ask your OTP, you provide everything, and eventually your Facebook will be hacked. Then there are free offers, Netflix, Hotstar, Prime Video offers. People get trapped through those offers. Donation schemes, care schemes, bank frauds. You receive an SMS that your account can be credited with some amount. Please enter your details. You provide your details and your bank account will be compromised. Then free recharge coupon options, KBC, Lucky Draw. All these are fraud, fraudulent schemes. Those are quite popular. And bank EMI defer, def, deferment frauds. You get an SMS that your EMI will be deferred. To provide your OTP, don't do that. Asking money on Facebook, you receive an SMS or uh, you receive a Facebook message or WhatsApp message where people are asking money from you, and this this message is coming from one of your close friend or somebody clone your Facebook uh, account. So if you would if you want that, nobody should clone your Facebook. Profile, you should do two settings. One, make your friend list private. Who can see? So you can go to the settings and their privacy settings. You can see these options. You have to select who can see your friend list, only me. And who can send you uh, or, or who can see your post, only my friends. These two things you should enable. 
that your friend list should be visible to only your only you nobody else no only you should be able to see your friend list <clears throat> if you do the settings nobody will clone your facebook profile and if you restrict your post visibility to your friends nobody will clone your facebook profile so do these two settings because normally people clone your facebook profile so that they can reach out to your friends and ask money or ask favors or eventually hack their accounts if you don't let them see your friends they will not hack your profile the income tax frauds where you receive sms that government is decided to provide tax refund to all tax payers so there is a link give your details provide your password and your income tax refund will come to your account don't get trapped into this other than that i have uh, i'll recommend you few of my books which i have written i have written 6 7 books now and all these books are available on amazon you can search it on google amazon you can also listen my stories uh, radio stories uh, those all are available on podcast so because i have completed five seasons so there are close to 60 70 stories available on radio you can just search on uh, google amit dubey hidden files podcast and you can see all leading platforms where uh, all these stories recorded stories are available so you can listen them you can learn a lot what i can guarantee you that if you listen those stories you will not be a, a victim you will never become a victim of any such kind of cyber crime so hidden files season 2 and all these seasons are available whether you can use apple you can use listen notes you, all these geo saban audible amazon spotify wherever you want you can uh, just click that link and you can listen those stories so in your free time whenever you get time you can listen and you can learn these stories these are uh, different different stories online multiplayer game fraud phone hacking loan app fraud dating app crime multi multi level marketing job for fraud digital footprint toy scanner fraud part time job fraud social media hack children games and hacking corporate fraud threats by even so 70 plus odd stories you can you can listen here you can learn and you can spread that message to your friends parents relatives etc so with this uh, i would like to stop here and uh, thank you so much for your time Uh, if you have any question you can write to me you can uh, either send me on my twitter or facebook my twitter is at cyber dubey you can note down my details my twitter is at cyber dubey or, or my gmail id is this you can note down my details and i'll respond back to you on your queries thank you so much jai thank you sir uh, can we take uh, one or two questions Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, the first question is uh, now uh, all the hospitals and the clinics are going on a digitization. Okay. So one <laughs> question that I have received is how uh, the hospitals can improve the security aspects as we are moving all process to digital. Please advise. So we need to ensure security at two fronts. When whenever we suggest. Uh, a security framework for any organization we have to work at three fronts people process and technology we need to strengthen all these three layers in your organization to ensure proper security of your information data processes technology wherever you have stored your information whether these are cloud servers or data centers or localized servers we need to ensure that they have the latest software first of all they have firewall enabled softwares they have intrusion prevention system intrusion detection system end point protection systems like antiviruses etc and then they say they should have some uh, the regulations in firewall so that not everybody should be able to access your servers only the authorized user should be able to access so you should apply deploy some identity access management solution now these are some mandatory technical components those are required and when your data is stored in your server whether it is on cloud or data center it should be encrypted and there should be regular backup of your information 
very very important the regular backup of your information nowadays we get lots of provisions from cloud side or data center side where they automatically take backup of your information so you can enable that feature you can request your data centers or cloud to take regular backups it will save you from lots of hassles later on so backup is important encryption your local your database uh, should be encrypted and when this data is accessed through apis to the client side it should also be encrypted so we call it data at rest encryption and data in transit encryption this is something which we can ensure about the technology part of it then comes process process is as important as technology because you may have the latest technologies but if you are not following strong processes you are still vulnerable because process is like your patch should be updated on a regular basis because every day every now and then we get new patches new software packages uh, because of the ongoing vulnerabilities weaknesses in the system those are identified all these played problems whether microsoft whether linux whether ubuntu whether database companies browser os companies they keep on releasing new patches we should update those patches on a regular basis if you are not updating it we are vulnerable and for which you need to deploy a process regular auditing you should have regular auditing mechanism auditing your information auditing your processes and auditing your uh, not only technical processes sometimes access mechanism who is allowed to that room who is not allowed to that room who is uh, able to access that information all these processes that you create that should be audited time to time because normally people what people do people start ignoring these processes and they they have a common password and they have shared it with multiple people now this was not part of the process this was not a secure way of handling information you should not you, sh you are not supposed to share your password with anybody else but it happens i have seen in lots of nursing homes and hospitals they have same password and everybody knows about it so i'll request not to do such things and you need to create strong check and balances that what is allowed what is not allowed if you are using wifi what you are supposed to do or what is not allowed wifi should also be secure it should not be uh, uh, linked with your internal systems that same wifi network is also able to access your internal databases and servers they should be isolated so if you ensure these processes and regular auditing regular vulnerability assessments you will be uh, secure and the last but not the least your people because your technology is uh, perfect you are uh, using a perfect processes but your people are not aware and they do a mistake they get a link and they click on that link and system is compromised you receive an email from your it seems like the email is coming from your managing director and it says that we got a very very important information and there is a document linked to that information can you study it and we'll discuss it tomorrow what will you do will you check with your md that this document is sent by you or not you will open that document you open that document and there is a pop up that you need to enable macros to read that document you enable the macros and your system is compromised now all these kind of attack vectors are very prevalent very frequent nowadays so we need to train our people to check and verify we call it zero trust environment we should not trust on any such email blindly we should not trust on any such call blindly that somebody asked money on behalf of your mb and you have paid them out all these things are happening so zero trust environment is very important for which you need to train your people for better cyber hygiene if you will ensure these three layers people process technology you can achieve a high level of security of your organization uh thank you sir can i take one more question yeah yeah sure question. okay uh the other question is uh, are medical devices an easy target for uh, cyber attacks yes yes because medical devices were not designed in such a way that somebody will actually hack them somebody will uh, misuse those uh, open protocols so most of these devices they don't have encryption in place they don't have a uh, uh, secure way of communicating with those devices they work on open protocols so criminal have the access of all these protocols and they can compromise ultrasound machines they can hack uh, systems those are actually monitoring any of your sensors in icu unit they can 
also attack some devices through EM wave attacks. We call it electro electromagnetic wave attacks. So if you have some sensors in your uh, hospital, and uh, I, I, so there's a small EM wave device which can generate electronic electromagnetic wave, and I visit your hospital, sit at your reception, and will start sending uh, uh, multiple abusive frequencies in your hospital. All these other sensors will be jammed or locked. So many such kind of attacks are possible. Uh, even they can steal information through, especially the the Bluetooth connected devices, Wi-Fi devices, and many health sensors, many health sensors, ECG devices, CT scan servers. These are hacked time to time. So we need to uh, design uh, our connectivity environment in such a way that it is isolated. Nobody should be able to enter into that Wi-Fi or connectivity environment, whether it is wireline or wireless. Isolation is the key. If it is isolated, secluded, private, then you are protected. If you are using the same network, same connectivity for across all different devices and uh, for your IT or for your OT and for your sensors and for your ICU, if the same network is used, then you are at risk. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, so on behalf of uh, MedPiper Technologies, John M. Med, Hospex, IRA, Kerala, IMA Junior Doctors Association, Insta Clinic, and John Ahmed, uh, we would like to thank you for joining us in detailing various you know, process under cyber uh, attacks and cyber crime. Also mentioning about some of the key points like uh, the common cyber attacks in healthcare and how we can uh, prevent. Also, what are the uh, greatest risks that health uh, professionals should be you know, aware of uh, by understanding all this technical aspects, security auditing. Uh, this and all will be very new to the uh, our audience like doctors and other uh, healthcare uh, providers. Uh, thank you, uh, sir, for sharing all these details to us. Uh, looking forward for uh, more collaborations in the future. Thank you, Soumya. Thank you so much, everyone. AMI and all the, the designated bodies, those are part of this initiative. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, looking forward for more association. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. And I'm sure that uh, all of you who would have listened to him would have understood the, uh, the, the gravity of the situation and how much we are vulnerable. And I'm sure that uh, taking a cue from this, uh, we all should go back and uh, try to protect ourselves, try to know a bit more about these details and also the, the, the legal protection which is available for us. So merely uh, doing PowerPoints and uh, you know, sending images across or uh, doing tele-reporting or telemedicine is not enough. Let us be aware of the other side of this and empower ourselves with knowledge and with the required expertise to manage uh, the other side of the web. Thank you all and wish you all uh, a great evening and thank you for all the patient listening.